The episode starts with a 911 distress call on June 14th, 2015 from a worried neighbor, Lacey, stating nobody at Dee Dee's house is answering. Lacey cries for the police to hurry, revealing that her neighbor has posted some terrible and depressing posts on her Facebook page. In the meantime, her mother, Mel, enters Dee Dee's residence through a window to check if anything bad has happened. As she stares at the silent house, the police sirens can be heard in the background. After a while, the detectives finally enter Dee Dee's house house and discover her badly stabbed corpse in the main bedroom. They share the news with Lacey and her mother, who are now worried about Dee Dee's daughter, Gypsy's whereabouts. The show then flashes back to seven years earlier. Dee Dee lives with her sick and wheelchair-bound daughter, Gypsy Rose, in their new home, provided by Habitat for Humanity. The two arrived in the new neighborhood in Springfield, Missouri in 2008, following the destruction of their previous home, caused by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. One day, they sit for a television interview, where Dee Dee talks about how getting the house was like a Disney dream for her. In the next scene, Dee Dee shaves Gypsy's head in the kitchen sink. As they talk, Dee prepares a medication medication concoction and injects it into Gypsy's stomach via a long tube. Hmm, my mom would just give me aspirin. Later at night, Dee Dee sings a lullaby for her daughter and makes her wear a sleep apnea machine to bed. After leaving Gypsy to sleep, Dee Dee opens a closet full of medicine bottles and takes a few pills for herself, including one named Sleepy Baby. The next day, they get a surprise visit from their neighbor Lacey. She offers Gypsy a makeover, and Dee Dee reluctantly allows it. During the makeover, the two girls start to bond, and Gypsy shares that her father made fun of how she walked when she was a child, before she used a wheelchair. All this time, Dee Dee is closely listening to the girls' conversation. Later, she makes sure to scrub off all the makeup, much to Gypsy's dismay. The following morning, the mother-daughter duo decides to venture out and meet new people in the neighborhood. First, they come across Lacey and her boyfriend, who are washing their car. Dee Dee heads over to Lacey's mom, Mel, who is chilling out with her friend Shelly. The three talk about parenthood, but Dee Dee keeps mentioning about how her daughter is suffering with diseases like paraplegia, epilepsy, anemia, and a heart murmur. Shelly and Mel are amazed by Dee Dee's strength to look after her poor kid. As the mothers talk, everything comes to a screeching halt. When Lacey offers Gypsy a sip of Coke, Dee Dee immediately rushes over to her daughter and tells everyone that Gypsy is allergic to sugar. Anybody else starting to get Bubble Boy vibes? The following day, Dee Dee takes Gypsy to the mall. Gypsy pleads with her mom to buy a blue necklace, but rather than buying it, she slips the chain into Gypsy's bag. It isn't until the last moment that she spots her neighbor Mel looking at her. In the evening, Dee Dee tries to talk to Mel, but the latter simply ignores her. Hence, with the intention of buying Mel's silence, Dee Dee plans a party at her house, inviting all neighbors. Meanwhile, Gypsy takes the time to search best friend and boyfriend's kiss on her mom's laptop and immediately deletes the search history before her mom gets home. The movie then cuts to the party, where a lot of people are gathered. Everyone is having fun out in the yard, and Dee Dee talks to all the people, one by one. Just then, Gypsy decides to eat a cupcake, which can be fatal for her. Seeing this, her mother freaks out and immediately rushes to stab her with an EpiPen. This stuns everyone, and they wonder how much pain Dee Dee has endured to care for her sick daughter. Gypsy wakes up at the hospital and overhears the doctor telling Dee Dee that she is not allergic to sugar. While leaving, they find Mel waiting outside to drop off Dee Dee's wallet that she had left at the party. Dee Dee thanks her and laments that she doesn't want people to see her as a woman with a bad reputation due to her past. Mel also reveals that she has her own troubled past, so she understandably offers to start afresh. At night, Gypsy lays her daughter down for bed and puts on her usual sleep apnea machine. As Gypsy fades off to sleep, Dee Dee opens a stash of checks addressed to Claudine Blanchard, possibly her real name. After that, she goes to bed next to her daughter. Less than an hour later, Gypsy wakes up while her mom is asleep and shuts off her machine to get out of bed. Gypsy, who had been a wheelchair user up until this moment, stands on her feet and slowly tiptoes her way out of the room. She then goes to the kitchen to eat whipped cream while readying her EpiPen. But after she licks a handful, there's no shock. It turns out that she isn't allergic to sugar. Her mom had just lied about it. When she returns to her room, she is startled to see her mom awake, who furiously tells her to get back to bed. On another night, Gypsy sits in front of her laptop watching makeup videos on YouTube while a 
enjoying a tub of frosting and a Coca-Cola drink. She soon feels a pain in her tooth, perhaps having a cavity after all the sugar she's been eating secretly. The following morning, Dee Dee wakes her daughter up to share great news. Gypsy has been named the community's child of the year. What the hell is that? While she gets excited, she notices Gypsy's tooth troubles. Dee Dee immediately suspects it is an underlying condition and takes her daughter to see their pediatrician, Dr. Harley. At the hospital, they meet with the doctor, and Dee Dee thinks Gypsy's acid reflux has returned, which is ruining her teeth. While the doctor calls for a gastroenterologist, Dr. Chandra, to look at Gypsy, Dee Dee sneakily steals his prescription pad from the counter. In the following scene, Dr. Chandra suggests Dee Dee make an urgent dental appointment. However, Dee Dee wants to treat her daughter's acid reflux first, prompting the doctor to become suspicious. Hence, she asks for Gypsy's medical records, but Dee Dee states that they were lost during Hurricane Katrina. Before the doctor can say anything, Dee Dee rushes her daughter away. Later, Dr. Chandra asks Dr. Harley if he has confirmed Gypsy's full medical history, but the latter has no answer. After this, the scene cuts to Dee Dee and Gypsy waiting in their car outside a pharmacy. Surprisingly, Dee Dee takes out the writing pad that she had stolen and forges some prescriptions on it. Don't forget to write scissorp, mummy. Back to the present, the detectives examine Dee Dee's stab wounds. Meanwhile, Lacey suspects someone might have been after Gypsy instead of her mother. She also informs the detectives about all of Gypsy's underlying illnesses. The movie goes back to 2009, where Gypsy has one of her teeth rot out completely. While brushing them, she whimpers with excruciating pain as the sink is left in a bloody mess. Because of this, her mother starts giving her more unnecessary medications. After a while, Dee Dee takes Gypsy over to Lacey's, who is hanging out with her friends. As the group discusses trivial topics, one of the girls notices Gypsy's bad tooth, prompting Gypsy to reveal that she has been sneaking out to eat sweet things at night. Meanwhile, Dr. Chandra isn't ready to give up on her suspicions. She makes several calls to hospitals to learn more about Gypsy's medical history. She finally places a call to Child Protection Services, and Allison, one of the representatives, pulls up on Dee Dee's doorstep. Seeing this, Dee Dee immediately springs into action, feeding sleeping pills to Gypsy to make her looks sick. Allison introduces herself and looks around the house. When she asks for Gypsy, Dee Dee lies to her, saying that her daughter has the mind of a seven-year-old. Soon, Allison sits for a talk alone with a medicated Gypsy while Dee Dee lurks at the doorway. She interrogates the little girl continuously to check if she is fine. However, as Gypsy speaks, she appears disoriented and dizzy, hence confirming her mother's claims. After this, Allison questions Dee Dee about her social security card, not matching the name on her address. But as usual, the mother uses Hurricane Katrina as an excuse. With this, Allison decides to conclude her visit, as she didn't find any suspicious activity. Allison should be fired. That whole trip was sus as hell. Next, Dee Dee takes Gypsy to the dentist to have her teeth extracted. After she is put under anesthesia, she wakes up to find most of her teeth gone. The little girl weeps while looking at herself in the mirror with a swollen mouth. Later, Gypsy tells her mom that she doesn't want to attend her Child of the Year award ceremony, not wanting to show herself in such a state in front of people. However, this only angers Dee Dee, and she yells that Gypsy is going to the event. We are then taken to the award day, where Dee Dee is preparing her daughter for the big event. She also brings some dentures for Gypsy to wear while on stage. After a while, her name is called upon on the stage for the Child of the Year award. Along with the recognition comes financial help of $5,000. Dee Dee cannot contain her happiness after receiving the check, while the crowd cheers them on. She then gives an emotional speech before she and Gypsy sing an impromptu rendition of I'll Be There. Cringe. Meanwhile, Dr. Chandra calls to check on Gypsy and manages to get an appointment with her despite Dee Dee's reluctance. In the evening, Gypsy and Dee Dee are back at the hospital for their appointment with Dr. Chandra. In her room, the doctor manages to talk with Gypsy alone and tries to convince her that she isn't allergic to sugar. She offers a can of Coke, but Gypsy refuses to drink it out of loyalty to her mom. Just then, Dee Dee arrives, prompting the doctor to put away the can and start examining Gypsy. Back in 2015, the cops continue to search Dee Dee's home to find clues to the murder. Sometime later, Lacey tells them of a secret Facebook account Gypsy had created to make friends and assumes she even had a boyfriend. Following this, the movie again flashes back to 2011. Dee Dee collects all the money from a GoFundMe page that pours in for her supposedly sick daughter. Meanwhile, Gypsy continues her routine of sneaking out of bed at night to watch YouTube videos on kissing and cosplays. Next, she prepares for Fantasticon, a cosplay event 
event while putting some makeup on her mom. While checking in at the event, Dee Dee says her daughter's birth year is 1995 when the girl at the counter asks her. This confuses Gypsy as she was always under the impression that she was born in 1993. Soon, the two run into Shelly and her boyfriend at the event. Meanwhile, Russ, one of the neighbors, notices Dee Dee and tries to ask her out for a date. However, Dee Dee changes the subject and asks to leave for the restroom while Gypsy approaches a guy dressed as Wolverine. He introduces himself as Scott and they chat about their favorite Marvel characters. Gypsy then urges Scott to see the DeLorean from Back to the Future, to which he agrees. Luckily, they are invited to the front line. Scott picks Gypsy up to put her in one of the seats and the two have fun together. Sadly, the good time doesn't last long as Dee Dee interrupts them and hurries Gypsy home. At the same time, Russ again shows up, trying to get Dee Dee's attention and shares that he too had a son in a wheelchair before he died. After they reach home and tuck themselves in bed, Gypsy sneaks out again to open a Facebook account, hoping she will find Scott online. However, she becomes confused about her birth date again, so she checks her mother's purse. To her surprise, her actual birthday is in 1991, meaning she's 19 years old. Angered by her mom's lies, because this makes her a predator if she goes after Scott, she steals some cash from her. The following day at a gas station, Gypsy secretly buys a cell phone. In the next scene, Dee Dee surprisingly gets a call from Russ, prompting her to ask where he got her number. Meanwhile, Gypsy starts talking with Scott through her new phone, sharing about her hospital staff, whom she refers to as her friends. Dee Dee continues to get phone calls from Russ, but their brewing romance cuts short when he offers to help her with her sick daughter. As expected, Dee Dee doesn't want anyone close enough to unravel her lies. On the other hand, Gypsy has also become close with Scott. She subtly suggests that she wants to run away with him. She also gives him her address if he wants to send a gift. Lo and behold, he sends her a package containing a red aerial wig. One day, Lacey catches Gypsy smiling at her phone and asks her about it. Unlike her mother, the little girl shares everything. She talks about Scott, who she refers to as Prince Charming. Before departing, she also tells Lacey about her secret Facebook account, which is under the name Emma Rose. Later at night, Gypsy gets a message from Scott saying that he's in an emergency room at the hospital, so he cannot talk. This worries Gypsy, and she immediately heads to the hospital. When Scott sees her, he is taken aback that Gypsy can stand on her two feet. Back at home, Dee Dee wakes up to find that her daughter is nowhere to be seen at the house. She then finds a note Gypsy left, stating that she is fleeing with her Prince Charming and never coming back. Elsewhere, Scott takes Gypsy to his place. She is seemingly happy to be home with her Prince Charming and puts some ice packs on his bruises. After chatting for some time, they kiss but get interrupted by Dee Dee at the door. Dee Dee begs her daughter to return home and admits that she nearly had an anxiety attack while she was gone. Hearing her mom, Gypsy reluctantly agrees to return. Before leaving, Dee Dee tells Scott that Gypsy is only 14 years old. Once back home, Dee Dee pulls her daughter's red hair and forces her back into the wheelchair. To see what happens next, watch the second part in series recapped.